Hello, this is Timothy Hobbs, and today I'm going to be walking through setting up Dopratsana Kola dev environment on your system. So, uh, we're going to start out here in the Git repository, and we're going to go ahead and clone this to a new directory. Git clone. And basically what we're going to be doing now is just following through the readme and hopefully everything will work properly and there aren't, isn't going to be any problems with the live demo. <clears throat> okay, so uh, the readme tells us that you should start out by copying docker.env sample docker.env and if we look at docker.env there's a couple of things that should be changed this password should be updated and these two passwords should be the same and the secret key should also be updated and the strava clients secret should be updated I'm going to not change anything because I don't care about security since this isn't going to be on the internet so I don't need to change the secret key or the passwords and uh, the Strava client I'm not going to set it up now because it's just too much work and not really relevant to this very simple demo okay so we want to do make docker compose it asks me to type in my pseudo password. I'm going to open the readme up in Emacs. Shimara. I didn't want to do that. And um, so it says to do Docker, make Docker compose, and um, we're waiting for that, and then. I guess actually the make doc compose thing is it contains the docker compose up command so we don't actually have to do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move that down. Okay, so that's loaded up, and we can then open up a separate window. It tells us to do su test and setup.sh and I'm actually going to
pause the recording now because this takes about five or ten minutes to install all the dependencies. While we're waiting for the dependencies to install, actually, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you the next step in um, or or show you uh, what else you need to do. So you need to go to this repository and you need to clone it, which I've done uh, here. And you'll need to launch that server. And without that, you won't have any styles. And you can also, in this repository, edit the front end CSS and any view.js or TypeScript files that we use. And we also uh, try to put assets like images there rather than in the main repository. And this is for faster um, deployment because the front end can be deployed to S3. It doesn't require like rerunning the entire back end test suite and everything. So we separate the front end from the back end. And right now we're we're installing the dependencies for the back end, and we've installed the front end very quickly just by running the server command, which serves those files. Actually, maybe I should go ahead and look at the readme for the front end because I think that maybe um, you need to do a build step. Yeah, you need to do npm install npm. Uh, yeah, you need to do npm install and uh, npm run script build in order to actually get the things that you need. Okay, so it's finished installing the dependencies and it's doing the migrations. Okay, now it's finished. So it's showing the username uh, prompt uh, and I need to create a new user. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And the user is created successfully and now I'm finished running the setup. What I need to do next is um, go ahead and launch the server and I don't need to actually do that in a separate terminal window. So I'm gonna delete that line that was in the wrong place. Uh, but I do need to do the poetry shell thing. And then I can copy this. and the server's running. And I have the front end running here. I can rebuild it just to make sure everything's up to date. My fan turns on when l compiling like three lines of TypeScript. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so it's built and then I can run it with the server command and it serves the front end as a static web server on port 8080. So I have the back end running on port 8021 
and you can change that port by going to Docker Compose and changing the port here. So you can reconfigure that port. I haven't really looked into how to reconfigure the port for the front end, but it's not really necessary in my case because nothing is competing with me for 8080. And then we're going to go back and look at the readme and um, it doesn't actually tell you how to open And the domain is uh, LV test dot LVH dot me. And that should be enough. And you use the same uh, username and password as you set up for uh, in the setup script and then you you're in and you can enter the administration and change things and that's it so hopefully that helps